Now you see block number 11 taking its place on the set and making it fun today's fantastic tutorial. I'll show you how to make it. Let's get started. Yes, that is right, everybody. Welcome back to Peek into Batik, the Michael Miller making it fun sew along here using our fabulous Batik fabrics and our jet black. I am Rob Appel, your host for Michael Miller. I am super excited that you are all, all are here today. Kind of wound up because yes, as I said, this is block number 11. We're only doing 12 blocks, so we just have a few more tutorials to go. And I've really had fun sewing along pace by pace with all of you. I make the block each month as we go. It's really fun as I've been watching the brand ambassadors do theirs. And again, just really excited to have so much participation in this. If it is your first time to one of our block of the month peek into boutiques, uh, please bounce right into that description below. We have free patterns for all of you. Uh, the patterns are in two different formats. We have them both for the AccuQuilt cutting system and we also have it for standard rotary cutting. I'm teaching rotary cutting here but the cool thing about it is is either way you can actually start uh, with one system and go to the other. So maybe you were rotary cutting early on in the Stone Ages and now you have the AccuQuilt and you're super happy. Uh, some of the blocks on my wall were done with the AccuQuilt and they all match up perfectly. So again super excited about that. Our fabrics are the Michael Miller Basics. You know I like to spice it up a little bit and this you already can see what the batik version looks like. It's awesome, right? And there's our block for today with this cool pinwheel in the center. But I am using some of our really cool hash dot. It's a basic, so hopefully you'll be able to find it in most of the quilt shops that are out there. And so our colors are mustard and turquoise and meadow. And then our marble here is the whirlpool color. We'll use that on the border. And uh, following our instructions today, I've done a little prep work and I will tell you this is really going to be super simple construction because all of the cutting and the piecing is basically the same. We have a couple color variations. So let's get started, right? You will need rectangles of your green fabric and of your gold fabric. You're going to need um, four of each each of these colors and these rectangles are two and a half by four and a half inches. Okay, so four of each of those. You are going to need 12 of the blue. Um, this is, like I said, the hash dot. And uh, these blue squares are two and a half inch by two and a half inch. That's what the definition of a square is. So 12 of those and you'll need four of the black ones. Maybe you can see I've already put a chalk line across the diagonal on my squares. We're going to do that to every square and I do that really really just by using a ruler, but my trick is to use the fine, fine tip Sharpie marker. And I like that because it makes a really fine little line because I want that to be the line that our thread goes on today. So I don't want it so wide that it's kind of gives for some slop and some irregularity. So at any rate, take a moment and mark all of your squares as you can see that I have done in advance. And now we're gonna go ahead and dive right in. And if you know me, I like to do the easiest thing first. So we're gonna take our orange rectangle, two and a half by four and a half, and I'm going to begin sewing on, and let's just just get in a good habit today of sewing on the left side first. You'll understand why a little bit more in a second. So I'm going to now go ahead and lay one of these squares. Fabrics are right sides together. You can see my diagonal goes from what I'm considering the top, you know, where you're sitting right over there. And then the bottom is over here on my side of the table. And we're going to go ahead and sew. And this line today is the sewing line, not the guideline. So as you get ready to put on a um, sew this together. You don't even need an edge guide foot like I have and with mine on I'm just putting it off to the side there because the needle is going right through that little sew or drawn line. Real nice and easy. And the trick with this kind of construction is that I want you to go ahead and take the time now to trim before we press. So as we get ready now, I'm just gonna go ahead and find that thread and I'm gonna mark with a quarter inch. And this is mostly to keep my hand safe. I don't usually save triangles that are this small, but I wanna cut first before I press so that as I press, I'm gonna go ahead and move this from the rectangle into the square or from the gold into the blue. And what that really does is it prepares the fabric for the next block we're going to put together or the next square we're going to put together. 
Okay, so coming back over here, still looking at it from bottom and top, um, we're going to now put on one more of the same blue triangle or square. So remember when I said we're going to start with the easy thing first? So the gold fabricates two of the blue squares. And mathematically, I bet you know where we're going here. Okay, so at any rate, I'm going to go ahead now and sewing, and you can go from either top to bottom, bottom to top, either way, but we're just going to sew right along that same drawn line there. And once again, come on back first, trim before you press, roughly quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, so that is looking terrific, right? And like I said, we're gonna go ahead and make four of those. And if you wanna do them all at the same time, you can certainly chain piece. We're gonna end up with blocks that look like this. So now you know why there's our one variation right there. And that's why we are starting on our left side today. So with my green rectangle now, I'm gonna start with my black square. Same top to bottom. We're gonna sew this on first, making sure it's on the left hand side. Worst case scenario, if you put them on the right, just put them all on the right, please. Because <laughs> we're making a pinwheel. Trimming before pressing. Using the ruler to keep my hand safe. And again, pressing into the new piece, that black there, so that as I come back in, now I grab one more of those blue squares lining up with all three edges one last time. We're going to sew this on to match. Trimming again, of course. And pressing Go ahead and move those out of the way. And I just showed you a moment ago, but as a refresher, this is the block unit. We're gonna make four of those and all of those are gonna be the same. So basically you're gonna now take the green rectangle base. It is on the bottom side. The orange is on the top side. Remembering this is the top where the point goes. Just go ahead and flop those over like this. And we're just gonna run a quarter inch seam through there. Now what I'd like to do is I'm gonna go ahead and just press um, with the uh, green at the base going up into the orange. It just gives me a little bit easier, flatter lie on my seam. And once again, as I pointed out, we should have four of these that all match each other just like this. Now we're gonna form with the pinwheel with this black in the center. So basically I'm just gonna kind of follow my instructions and rotate, 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 had it right the first time, and rotate just like that. And then we're just gonna sew the individual blocks together. So let's do these two, then we'll do those two. Chain piecing there is no problem, of course. And now we're just gonna go ahead and iron out over here. Again, I'm just gonna iron into the green fabric or the rectangle versus ironing into the seam. And that way, if I do these both on the same, this should give us a nice nesting in the middle of the block. Don't go so fast that you put your pinwheel back together incorrectly. So make sure you find it there in the center. Match up those center seams. Let's go ahead and press this so we're dialed in with our center of our block. 
And this is how they all go again. If it's your first time to the peak in the Batik, they all are gonna form, as you can see over the design wall, these awesome star blocks that go around like this. So this is really cool. And what we're gonna need to do now is build our border pieces and the borders are the same for all of the blocks for all 12 months. So let me just set this aside for a second and show you what we're talking about. We're basically gonna build what is kind of a flying geese ball block, flying goose block. So it was a rectangle that was eight and a half inches by four and a half inches and two squares that are four and a half inches by four and a half inches. Again, the definition of a square. Why do I think that's so funny? At any rate, so I need you to have two of those made. Technically, I really need you to have four of those made because two of them are gonna have these snowball blocks on the outside, but I can't expect you to know how to do that without me showing you, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Take your rectangle, of course, here, and then on the back of the blue squares, hopefully you can see I've already drawn the diagonals, and today the construction is gonna be just like we did with the very smaller units. So this is just a bigger version. Watch all three edges, and we're gonna go ahead and sew on one first by going right with our needle, right down that drawn line. But this is where the change comes in, at least for me personally, as these are big enough to save for something else. I've got a couple other videos out there that do show that. So when I get ready to cut that, I'm going to carefully and safely go ahead and mark this with a true quarter inch. And I'm going to trim this off and I'm going to set this aside for later. I would have liked to have left those perfectly matched up because I do. I just go back through and sew those with another quarter inch and I'm saving them for another project that you will all see one of these days, maybe soon. So anyways, let's go ahead and press this triangle uh, out. We're pressing the blue away from the black here. Now we can go ahead and lay this other one on and just please make sure that the lines are forming into a V shape. You can see it here. And we're gonna go ahead and stitch these on. Once again, making sure I have a good quarter inch seam allowance because I really want to save these triangles for later. We're going to press this over. And now you can put on your snowball corners, basically just do one and then spin it and do the other before you go back to the iron. So start over here. Trim it, spin it, drop the other one. If you have prints, make sure you're going right sides together. Batiks and solid, not so important. And now on these, I'm going to go ahead and press away from the center. So pressing away from the blue into the black. And then as we get ready to put these on to our awesome star center, we just need to make sure that we have them all in the appropriate orientation. This one needs a little bit more ironing time. So the blue is gonna come in here and touch to our center now to form the star like you can see, putting on our short sides first by flipping them over lining up those center seams. Once both of the short pieces are on, now I want to go ahead and press from the add-on piece, the outer border edge, into the square. So this time I'm holding up the work, pressing into. Same on this side here. And 
And that's going to help the seams line up nice as I go to put on these long edges. Just flipping it over, matching everything up. And there it is, the last little stitch, the last little thread cut. Let's go ahead and press this open so you can all see how beautiful it's turned out again. And we are getting so close to the finish line. Now, I know some of you are just, like I said, showing up to the party because I read all the comments every single week that you all put in there. Again, thank you for that. So I want to take a moment to answer a couple of questions right now. A lot of you are wondering, hey, you've just gotten here. Where can you get all of the blocks and all the information? So again, it's at our blog, which we call Making It Fun. There are links in the description below to all of the blocks up to block 11 today. Now, on the Block number one is where you get all the yardage requirements to make the entire quilt. And as a reminder, we started doing this with our beautiful batiks and our jet black. But one of my major goals here at Making It Fun is to really help support the local quilt shops. And so when I'm filming my samples here, I often use the Michael Miller Basics because the basics are in most of your local quilt shops. Now, if the basics are not found in your local quilt shops from Michael Miller, please tell your local quilt shop owner and buyer that you you would love to see more Michael Miller in their shop. Now, I will tell you that the shops know what we're doing out here and they appreciate the video. So if you'll also wander in and tell them that Rob and Mike here say hello, it's really a fun experience. So I really appreciate all of you supporting your local quilt shops, your online retailers, and me, of course, here at Making It Fun from Michael Miller Fabrics. We have a blast. This has been a great, great sew along. And like I said, we've got one more block to do and then the finishing instructions. We have a new tutorial every Wednesday for you here and I say every a little lightly because you never know what's going to happen but that's just the world we live in today. So until I see you next time everybody I am so glad you were here today. Don't forget to subscribe. We will see you very soon. Stay safe and happy sewing. Thanks again. What? Are you actually still here? That's fantastic. Make sure you check out some more of my other fabulous content right here on YouTube. I think it's terrific. Please subscribe while you're there and make sure you hit that little notification bell so you don't miss another moment of the fun.